Thank you. We'll go ahead and call our special meeting of the Paducah Board of Education order. Madam Secretary, would you call the roll, please? Sure. Dr. Koji? Here. Ms. Hancock? Here. Dr. Hudson? Here. Dr. Levin? Here. Have we established a quorum? Yes, we have. Is there a motion from the board to approve today's agenda? I so move. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Dr. Koji? Yes. Ms. Hancock? Yes. Dr. Hudson? Yes. Dr. Levin? Yes. If everyone please rise. Dr. Shigley, you lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have two action items on today's agenda. Action item number 3.1, Energy Savings Project. The superintendent recommends that the Paducah Board of Education approve the Energy Savings Project proposal from Ascendant for a total project cost of $10,627,384 with 5,000, excuse me, 5,600,000 of the cost funded from energy savings. The following is the list of energy conservation measures developed for this project with detailed descriptions of each solution under separate cover, thermal envelope improvements, water conservation measures, domestic water heater upgrades, kitchen, kitchen hood upgrades, kitchen freezer and cooler refrigeration upgrades, HVAC equipment upgrades, heating equipment upgrades, HVAC boiler upgrades, heat pump loop pump upgrades, DDC control platform upgrades, refrigerant line set insulation replacement, exhaust and ventilation control optimization, interior and exterior lighting upgrades, vending machine upgrades, compressed air optimization, bus clock, heater control upgrades, electric resistance heating upgrades, water source pump upgrades, destratification fan deployment and HVAC rejuvenation. Long list. <laughs> Is there a motion to approve the energy savings project? I move we approve item 3.1, energy savings project. Dr. Koji has moved approval. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a second from Ms. Hunter Hancock. Are there any questions from the board or any comments from the superintendent? All these different things are doable? Absolutely. Um, I, I think the big part looking at this, um, the two main keys for me is the Newton Tillman's HVAC system was put in in 1998. Um, that was my second year teaching at Tillman, so uh, I was out of college. Um, so there's a significant opportunity for upgrades there um, and savings just to give you an idea. We've had a run of compressors in the last two years, so we're over. I believe it's four hundred nineteen thousand dollars worth of uh, maintenance budget gone towards fixing the HVAC system there. So that's just draining um, our budget specifically there. But the other side of that, there's significant savings in addition to the Tillman HVAC, um, significant savings in our building envelopes where we're leaking um, heat or air, cool air. Um, in addition to that, there is uh, lighting across the district, so private classrooms in every building except for the Innovation Hub, which, which shouldn't need to be upgraded. Um, but that's the Tillman, um, Morgan, and Nav, um, Clark, and even the Middle School, so that's interior and exterior lights too. So, um, the rest of those are um, just specific issues that we found to conserve energy. And what happens if the $5,600,000 is not recognizable from the energy savings? I think they owe us some money. So um, the way that's put together, uh, they're not in the David Belt and back is all over here from um, Assurance. And so they, they might want to speak to that specifically. But um, this is, we, we did this in um, 2009, I believe, was the date we, we did this prior to this uh, updated HVAC at the two elementary schools. I believe it was me and the Clark that that was done with that. So. Um, Katie allows us to do this, the $5.6 million in savings, which we're projecting more savings than that over the 20 years. Um, 
that money um, does not count against our bonding potential as a district um, because that savings is realized each year to make those debt retirement payments. Um, also with this is Mark Rawlings from Mayor who's um, handled with all of our bonding stuff for the past 15 okay. years, yeah. 20 years. Is that? Yeah. Okay. I just have, I'm just curious from you all, how hard is it to realize that stuff? Is this low hanging fruit or is this, you know, difficult to, to achieve based on the list of projects that you're, sure. that you're doing? Sure. Yeah, Dr. Wolfman, uh, uh, we can do it. Uh, we've uh, assessed all the facilities. We've uh, decided what improvements to make to be able to stand behind the guarantee. Uh, the way the contract's written, which was written by the Kentucky Department of Education, it protects you all, and then it's fully guaranteed. So we have to realize those savings, or just like Dr. Shively said, we'll, we'll have to uh, pay the difference. So we're conservative, we're engineers, uh, we're local companies that make up our team, and so we make sure that we put forth a project that we can deliver on. So you're covered, though. It is a guaranteed energy savings contract that we'll be entering into. Other questions? Are there other questions from the board? <clears throat> okay. Madam Secretary, call the roll, please. Dr. Koji? Yes. Ms. Hancock? Yes. Dr. Hudson? Yes. Dr. Levine? Yes. Item 3.2 BG1 Project Project Application Energy Savings Project BG22 155. Superintendent recommends that the Paducah Board of Education approve the BG1 project application document for the energy savings project, which is BG22-155, for the amount that I had read above, $10,627,384 as presented by Chad Jezik, Director of District Operations. Is there a motion from the board to approve item 3.2? I make a motion to we approve, I'm sorry, okay. item 3.2. There's a motion from Dr. Hudson. Is there a second? I'll second. Second from Ms. Hunter Hancock. Are there any questions from the board? Call the roll, please. Dr. Cody? Yes. Ms. Hancock? Yes. Dr. Hudson? Yes. Dr. Levine? Yes. Next item on our agenda is item 4.0. This is a discussion from Eric Steva, architect, and Matt Gum, construction manager for our Head Start building. Eric is a um, on video, I guess Skype with us or Zoom um, with that. But as we all have experienced COVID, um, one of the things that uh, has happened is an adjustment in pricing. And so when we originally um, wrote the grant for to build the new preschool by the land, um, we used the $235 um, as allowed by the Kentucky Department of Education to build an elementary school. Um, we've seen significant price increases with that. And so we're projecting that out with the timeline um, that we have, which is aggressive. Uh, there are a few discussion items that, that the board needs to give us guidance on here as we discuss on um, our path forward to uh, design and build a, um, the preschool, I will, or the Head Start preschool. I will say we are in the middle of construction right now with the first phase um, happening right now um, with abatement of um, the uh, houses that we bought. So that, that is going on, but this will be the next phase. We're, we're looking to get this out to bid um, early January, I believe was our original schedule. Um, we'll go through the awarding the bid sometime mid-January, maybe into January. Uh, well, our January board meetings will be early, so that's the 10th, so probably a special call meeting. But at that point, we were just running some things that some of them are cosmetic um, on how you see the outside, and some of them are structural, um, which we run into. Here's what it, architect, engineer, um, the opinion is relative to here's the construction manager and discovery of the sequence. So I hope I set that up pretty well, but um, I know Matt um, with the lines has two different schedules on the way the construction schedules to put in front of you for us to discuss. Um, and I know uh, Mr. Eric Steele will have some stuff he wants to share too. Uh, thank you all for letting us be here today. Uh, I want to go over a few items with you and what brought this to light over the last uh, few weeks, the last month, has been the pricing of items that we've seen. The market has uh, accelerated 
substantially. And so um, our November BG um, with you all set in the neighborhood of total project cost about 17.7. We feel pretty uh, secure about the fact that the way numbers are coming in now, that that number is getting into the 21, 22 million dollar range. So as we step back and start looking at things that we can achieve without making major architectural changes in the facility, how can we potentially save some money on that? And that's what some items we want to go through with you today. And, and Eric, chime in whenever if I step out of line, okay? Uh, I'll take the easy one for me first, which is what is in front of you, which is a schedule. Um, this is a structural component of the building. Uh, just imagine your roof structure. Right now, that roof structure is made of bar joist and a deck and then a metal roof in that order. Um, the schedule that you have in front of you will explain the fact that bar joists are now 40 weeks from the day that you order those bar joists. For, from approval to the day they hit the job site. So one of the schedules you have is a bar joist schedule and that will show you that plugging that into our schedule it shows you how long it takes us to get the bar joist and then how long it will take us to complete the job afterwards. So our team uh, along with Eric and with engineers have come back and said what other ways could we do to help condense that and there's some light gauge metal framing, some light gauge trusses that we could use that provide us a much quicker time frame on being able to go. The challenge here is we're a single story building as we come up out of the ground. So if we sit and wait for 40 weeks for bar joists from the time that we order, there's going to be a spot in that schedule that nothing is happening on this job. Now, in normal cases, is that horrible? Can you schedule it? Can you make it work? Sure you can. In our case, we've got a challenge here to make sure that by, I'm going to say March 1st of next year, but let's just put March 1st to make sure that we've spent the federally granted money. We can't sit and wait. We have to be spending money. We've got to make sure that we spend the money that you need us to spend by a certain date. We realize that is more than what the grant money is for, but we got to get through the grant money first. So with the change of the bar joist to a light gauge metal framing, we feel pretty confident in the fact that we can spend easily on hard cost about $11 million by the time that we're supposed to. Now, when you roll in some of your soft costs with that and some of your stored items, it's going to be okay with the fact that to meet it. If we can't, and we don't change from bar choice to like get a metal framing, you'll see on that schedule if you go to March of 2023, when we front load, when we cost load that schedule, we get to about $7 million, which is a shortfall, not very attainable. So uh, those two reasons specifically that we feel like that we need to make the change from bar choice to uh, metal frame schedule and the ability to do the money. Now, on the other side of that coin, I will tell you, Eric and his team will have to have some redesign time. So it's going to shift our bid schedule a little bit, and that's something that they need to address and let you all know what they're dealing with. But on item number one on my list, my recommendation to this board is to change from bar joist to light gauge metal framing in the design for the roof structure. And we'll continue on through some items and I'll pause long enough to let you ask some questions. Uh, I know the, the schedule is a little hard to read. You can follow the dates on the left hand side. The, uh, but the delta difference here is Using light gauge metal framing, you're looking at about July of 23, occupying the building. Using bar joist, you're looking at December of 2023. So, 
Matt, that's what I was going to ask you before I look at the roof structures, just to make sure I've got this right. Mm -hmm. The bar joist and metal decking, it looks like you all are projecting we would be done right at Christmas of 2023. Yes, sir. So if you go to the second page, uh -huh. um, and you said that we felt like, just to remind the, the federal FEMA grant, that money has to be spent by the end of February 2023, so that money has to be gone. And you feel like we would be on this schedule at seven million spent out with the bar on basic payment amounts, right? Um, and then if you compare that to the light gauge metal trussing and decking schedule, you're projecting June seventh or nineteenth yes. of twenty twenty three, and you said you thought we'd be about eleven million about eleven million, right? And so cost. Just in the delta there is of why that happens is with the light gauge metal frame where we're able to get the roof structure on get dried in and be able to get some of that work inside the building going some of your finishes your mechanical equipment you want that stuff going in without having a roof in place you just can't do that type of work and i'm going to be a little bit rough on the estimates here because i have it in front of me but um if you look at costs we've already occurred in the building there's about four hundred thousand dollars in property that we purchased as part of that grant that we're getting refunded for. Um, the BG1 for the first phase was right at $1.5 um, So that gets us close to $2 million already spent. And then there's $250,000 for office furniture, $250,000 for classroom furniture, and then there's some playground equipment. They're all part of that grant that we can buy before February 28th of 2023. Have on site, store, um, and then bring that in as needed in the construction schedule. So that would get us close to the $14 million uh, with counting that 11. So I know Eric wants to talk. I know we've got Bacchus Oliver in here who's done all of our mechanical engineering on this project um, through Bank and Farm work and, and Markham Engineering um, as a person that would also, I didn't recognize earlier. But I do understand um, from both our engineers and architects if we move to the bar joist and metal decking option, there's going to be some additional time needed to redesign. And there's going to be, uh, opposite, sorry, light gauge metal trussing. Sorry, yeah, we're here, sir. That's all right. Thank you. Um, Thanks for catching me. Uh, so that time would push that June date back on the light gauge metal truss decking. Um, I don't know what that exactly We feel was. like that right now, and just conversations we had with Eric this morning before we left the office, that is somewhere in the rough neighborhood of six weeks. Yeah, and, and I would assume there's some additional costs occurred to redesign. That is correct, yeah. sir. Okay, I'll be quiet now, so. That's okay. Is that helpful to you? I was just trying to walk up through my head. So, so we have 14 million that we have to encumber, right? And we get close to 11 million, am I correct? Sorry, of, of hard construction dollars. With, with almost three million already spent towards the project before we start this phase. Okay, so or that would be counted. Number, yeah. Okay. Sorry, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's 1.5 million in construction costs already will be done by the end of February, I believe, is our, our date on that. We've got 400,000 in property. We've got furniture that will buy before February. It's about half a million uh, of 2023. And then we've got um, Another 380, I think, is the number in playground equipment. Uh, so it's almost 4 million that will either be on site or already spent. Um, and, and you will pay your architect basically 90% yes. of their contract amount, which not right off the top of my head, I don't know that number. But I mean, you're you're talking dollars that'll that'll slowly add up. Yeah. So it seems as if we will spend the 14. We'll get there. We're going to so, sir, we, we will spend that fourteen million dollars. <laughs> when he called me and said we want you to be a part of the team, he said, but here's the caveat. So our goal, number one goal for any decision we've made to date has been how can we spend that money by March first? Of twenty twenty three. Twenty three. Yes, sir. And we do need to give I know Eric has um in back I know have um, some other thoughts that they want to share that's opposite of that. Uh, on item number one, I think. Yeah. Eric, you want to chime in on item number one, sir? You got to go? I did. Yep. Okay, there we go. I have my stuff. I'm unmuted now, so. So, what's 
talk a little bit about some of the other cost savings that we were looking at. One is the on the exterior uh, envelope. We had designed hey, Eric, panels. Eric, I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt you. Hey, can, can we talk schedule first together before we get into okay. the okay, sure. yeah. sorry, no. I, I just want the board, this is a, a group that's good decision, obviously. Um, yeah. I just want them to hear from both sides of here's the concerns. And so Matt has laid out these concerns of light gauge metal get us, I think, roughed in quicker, get us moving forward. I did talk about there is a schedule delay there, so I thought you'd want to address that in the back of the center in here if you, you've got thoughts with that too. Um, I'm pretty much in agreement with uh, what Matt Young has presented in terms of the schedule. Um, you know, it is going to be a big change, but we looked at it, it just affected the structure under the roofs, the light gate metal presses under the slope roofs and concrete planks under the low slope roofs, which already has concrete planks already on the projects. And that's not that big of a deal. So, yeah. I know talking with the BMW, they request about four weeks for the design time for the structural wall. We'll need to catch up, you know, a couple of weeks after that. Uh, to respond to their changes. So I think by the end of January, we would be able to be ready to go out to them. Mr. Steven, we missed the first part of what you said. I think you're saying that to redesign using light gauge is going to take between now and the end of January. Or and was there something oh, right. else? Was there something else we missed as, as a part of that? Uh, no, I think we're talking with the W the search engineers, they get four weeks, we get a, a week or two after they get finished or and recording all our details with theirs. But that's what we're looking to be aiming for the end of January to be going out to bid. It sounds like we're in a spot where to make deadlines, the light gauge is going to be necessary. Can you give us an indication of how it's going to appear externally with light gauge compared to bar joists and metal decking? If there is any you difference, must, you, you want to see any difference from the exterior? So the roof isn't different. The the appearance of the roof. This is just how we're no, supporting the is, roof. So, Eric, yes. This is literally just the structure of how it goes. Everything, every component of this would be covered up. You wouldn't know the difference if you walked out if it was one way or the other. So it's not, it doesn't change the, what the materials we'll, for the roof itself. We'll get itself. to those okay. a couple of items next. I think Dr. Ramon to just have a uh, peace of mind. Uh, the Innovation Hub has bar joists. The Paducah Middle School has light gauge trusses. Uh, light gauge trusses make sense at Paducah Middle School because it doesn't have an accessible attic. Here we have an accessible attic, so it's going to be a little trickier to make the trusses work, but we need to to finish the school on time. Right. But still, uh, still is a good sound system, and you won't notice a performance difference. We're currently doing two and finishing up a third school, one of them with JRA, uh, that, that has this exact detail. So okay. it's, it's a system that's used. It's not a something new that is going to give, should give you any thoughts. Okay. <clears throat> Dr. Hudson? No, I, 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 why did we recommend the bar joists in the first place? Because I'm trying to. Very fair. Uh, probably within the last, I want to say three months, is when we've really seen the escalation of time frames of the bar joist. Mm -hmm. so, you all know better than I because I came on this team July, August. This thing, this design has been moving and growing for a long time before me. So those things aren't things that just happen over time. But one of our jobs as your construction manager is to discuss constructability schedule and cost. Mm -hmm. And so once we got our DD drawings and started chewing through them is when we said, hey, on the other jobs we're bidding right now, we're seeing this delay in bar joist. And for a single story building that you're gonna get to bearing height really quick, um, it is a major delay. On a job that's a two story building that you don't have bar joist until you get to the top, it's not as, not as difficult because the schedule would allow 
out. Your schedule will, will go out. But before now, it's it's has extended from what used to be 12 weeks to 40 weeks because of the supply chain. And that's become more and more over the last three. I think just very simply, they have a switched order. Our choice is quicker and quicker. And now it's, it's changed because of uh, uh, just the things we're seeing. Uh, I've had several projects that have changed to like age trust because of this. So we start off with what the cheaper method and the market's changed and we now need to chase it. I think the only reason we're telling you all about it is because we're going to need a little more time now to go back and change the documents to do it. So Not that we would do anything without somebody knowing we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, I mean, this is a discussion that when we, when we had on the phone, it's, you know, you won't see it, you won't know it, you won't know the difference, but it does affect our design teams. So that's why we wanted to bring it forward and let you see the cost impact and the schedule impact to make a, you know, we're going to give you as much information as we can for you to make the, the best decision for you all. So if, if no more discussions about bar joist and metal deck. I, I do have one, sorry. Yes, sir. Um, and let me say this. Part of the, we've got an extension on the, um, FEMA grant um, that we had to ask for based on how the court systems work for some of the eminent domain. Remember, we had two pieces of property. One was building 52 that we had to run errors day on. They changed the way you had to serve people and we could serve people in San Diego, Baltimore, New York City. Um, and the other piece was actually PDA had it as a part of a different property, but it actually when we got into the deeds, it wasn't. Um, it was like somebody moved away and they just started going that yard beside them and it became that property. Um, so that's kind of what's put us in this situation, but is there any, I know you're saying four weeks back as you've been designing on the design team here since I think four eight. Um, it, can we can we crunch that down? Is there any way we can get that under four weeks? Is there any way we get our architect firm under two weeks of turning that out? I know you've got other jobs. Um, we're, uh, we like to be the favorite client. <laughs> I think uh, Eric should speak that. He's in touch with the entire team. I'm okay. sure he's pushed on them. Uh, I'm not directly involved with this project. Eric, did you hear my question? <laughs> yeah, I did. And I think what the four and six weeks are kind of the worst case scenarios. I think what Peter is going to do is, you know, we're going to start tomorrow morning, you know, start hurting the ship and working towards trying to get that done even faster. And we'll keep you in the loop. Um, 
And to that end, I would say, and I think Eric will be able to speak to it, it's basically the areas that are highlighted in blue on his, uh, on his sheet there to the left. And there's an area, yes, and the white to the right. Uh, so uh, we would recommend that you change that system. It's just a system change. Eric, on your end, I don't think I've asked this, but since it's a hot topic, that's a detail change for you all, is that correct? As far yes, as that's a fairly easy for us to be for maybe looking at Matt just doing that as a detail culture. Okay. So we probably said very right. many people are just like the way it is. We create an alternate sheet that shows the different rich systems. Basically it's gonna apply on the lower slope or the, the low slope. So when we bid the project you all will see that as an option. So that's just more as we went through these items for discussion more than anything. So Eric has decided that that'll be an alternate. We'll list it on the bid form on when the bids come in as the board, when we present you the bids, we'll tell you base bid is this much and any alternates that we decide will be items that are up for discussion. And this will be one of those that we'll discuss later when we bid the job. Matt, let me yeah, say this. Just a second, Eric. Just they're not as familiar with the project as, as obviously as we are. And so when we talk the flat roofs, the corner that sits on Washington and Oakdale is the, um, would be flat. Um, if you go, can you go back to the picture, um, the, the side shot area, that is the office area. Okay. And then, so if you see, this, this yes, right well, if you see the white right there, I guess this will be um, so this is where our flat area is, just to make sure you understand that up here. And then in addition to that, um, our kitchen area, I believe, is what we have here. There also our, um, I believe the area there also takes care of our transition program in the future, correct? Yes. Yep. And so those are the two areas not visible from the street. I guess drone footage would look different. Drone footage, it's going to look different, but other than that. Matt, I'm sure you're talking about white and you're talking about the same warranty, right? Yeah, same warranty period, same color, same look, same behavior, just a different product. Sorry, I was trying to make sure you got to connect it in. Eric, sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, you have to give me that this is the first system that you're trying to see any difference from the street level. Which, which leads us into the one that now, these last two items, this is why we're really here, is two discussions. Number first, the first one is the roof system. Currently, the way it's designed, it is a metal roof, a visible metal roof. Uh, and all of the items that you see that are in gray, sorry for, yeah. Any item there is in gray, and right now it is a metal roof that can be any color on the color chart that you can imagine, just about. Uh, one of the, when we started doing value engineering on our end, to come up with something and said, hey, we could change those to a shingled roof as opposed to a metal roof. And that dealt us about $750,000, so that you know why we're bringing this to a discussion. But um, I think Eric has it muted. I think Eric has background. Yeah. Yeah. Do they have parties up there every day? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Dr. Shively said, hey, give me a look. Let me see what this potentially would look like with a shingle roof as opposed to a metal roof. So Eric and his team have given you some elevations to look at. So just pay attention to the top. I mean, we all know what shingle roofs look like, and you all know what metal roofs look like. Uh, it is a substantial amount of savings. Note, shingle roof, you're looking at about a 20 year replacement. Metal roof, you're looking at about a 50. So there is some discussion that needs to be made long term for the best of the district. But in the moment, that's why we bring this to you. That could be a substantial amount of savings for you all to, to grab at this point.
Shingles would be, I mean, they're dark here. I mean, do there's different colors of metal roofs. Do you shingle this different? Do you look at options, or would this be the one option to use? No, during during color selection, once we have a contractor, all contractors will submit product data that are colors. That's when Eric and his team will put a color board together. He'll bring that to you all and walk through that, and you all will select color. So uh, it's a black one or a gray one or a tan one. That, that, those decisions will be made at a later date with Eric and his interior design team and design team that will bring those to you. So you don't necessarily have to get caught on black, but for right now that gives you an idea of what that might look like. And the total cost to roof this entire building, I guess, is 700 and, I mean, what, what's the total cost to, uh, roughly? It's at 750000 in savings. Yes, sir, it is. And uh, we'll so get what, that. Matt will get that, uh, that budget. We'll look at what that was originally. From a shingle to Matt, this one is the same. The shingles are saving us 750000 So, yeah, let me just make sure we're all on this. Metal roof, the reason we discussed that, I believe, on the beginning is we've, we've got some buildings um, close to this building that are a part of our football track complex and our tennis complex um, that the board a long time ago chose to do that. And so we were trying to mirror that somewhat and then connect that to that. And so that's why we talked about metal on the front end. Um, the metal has gone up <laughs> uh, with, within the last uh, six months. I know talking to our um, uh, Mr. Ebersobel and Mr. Franklin that they wanted to get us a price on metal right now because all that they did, that's how much it's changing relative to some of the work we're doing in welding in the makerspace. And so, um, and I, go ahead. Very important to know because this is a federally funded job, we will have a federal wage scale associated with this project. A sheet metal worker which is where the roofer went on metal roof on land is is substantial in the amount of fifty dollars, sixty dollars an hour, to where a carpenter, which is where the shingle is, is in the twenty five to twenty eight dollars an hour. There's the other substantial cost savings that you're looking at. In our budget right now, we've got around one point three on our roof system on the metal. And then you take off 750 out of that, so that would be somewhere in the 600, just talking round numbers. So that gives you a, sort of a range of scope as to what it would be. Sir. So the cost of the product plus the savings and labor combined is $750,000. Yes, sir. And if I understood Eric on our way up, and we'll tidy up with him after we go through the very last one because that's <coughs> some of the things he'll want to touch on. They can also bid that as an alternate because their details are already there with the with the metal and then they can show the shingle and say on bid day, here's what your true savings are. I want to about the long term um, the the sheet drop will last twenty years but the metal will last fifty years. Your, your lifetime expectancy on your normal shingle is a 20-year replacement. You can pay more and get 30 or 40-year shingles like you do on a house. But your normal commercial is a 20, and your normal life expectancy on your metal is about 50 years. So there is a delta of that change that you would need to take into consideration. John, that's what I'm thinking. The long-term saving. Yeah. So this is so this is really about needing to save, am I correct, to cut costs? Well, I mean, the conversation needs to happen, absolutely. Um, Mr. Rollins and I sat down last week and looked at the energy savings project, um, a couple other projects that uh, we hope to do along with this and, and develop a plan on how to, um, you know, you all, my idea was you all give me guidance and Matt guidance and architect guidance. Um, I'll put the financing together relative with, obviously, uh, Mark Rollins' help on how, and Angela Gold on how we get there. And so I, I, I think there's ways to get to the $22 million, uh, just to be blunt and honest, that uh, doesn't put us in a bad spot. 
um, but it does create some things that we would need to do differently than we plan. You know, when we've looked at ESSER funds, just bluntly, how we would use those to um, replace computers in five years for our students, um, that's through ESSER funds. And so that means if we have to take some of those ESSER funds to get to that $22 million number, um, as an example, then we'll have to figure out how to replace computers differently than our plan right now. But that's multiple years in the future, where this is in the next you know, 18 months. Um, but hopefully 18 months we get this done on the wood. So um, it doesn't take anything away what we're doing. It doesn't take our extended school day or extended school year away planning wise. But there's some things that we looked at that's allowable through the extra funds that were like, hey, this will help get us in a better spot you know, in 2024, I believe. Yeah, you're here. I think that's the uh, next time we would redo computers for right. students. So those are some of the things that are the in the background yeah. um, with that. Other questions from the board? I just have one. Did, can, you mentioned an alternate bid. Can they can bid either option for, the, for the shingle roof or the metal roof? So what we would do in, in our the way we will package this out is to take each scope of work, right? What we refer to as a bid package. The first one was site, so that was a bid package, and the next one will have concrete and masonry and steel and mechanical, electrical, all down the lines. In the in the roofing bid package, we will tell the bidder that their base bid is to be metal, and their alternate bid on the bid form will be shingles. So they will give us a deduct of ever how much it is on bid day. It'll be just a deduct and then when we tally up the bids at the end of bid day, we'll bring those to you for a discussion. Uh, and both of both of these first two items seem like with conversations with Eric that they're easily obtainable to do in write up an ex explanation to bidders on how we get there. Uh, and, not to put any words in Dr. Shotley's mouth, but if you are more comfortable where you are getting to and know it, I would say absolutely look at these as alternates. If you were telling me today that, hey, I can't find it, then, then it's, we've got to make cuts as opposed to options. Exactly, I think today is six weeks out in front of us, potentially. Um, we said end of January, so we're six weeks away from getting it out to bid. Bid be open for two to three weeks. Three About weeks. Three weeks, days. so that's nine weeks ahead. Just to put it, your all thought process radar, how do we want to do that? We can discuss the adjustments we would have to make in our ESSER plans going forward um, as we go through this. But let's try to get this to you as quick as we can to pick through. Especially with us being able to bid it two different ways and actually seeing what that delta is. Are there other questions from the board regarding the. So, our, our decision really is going to be the end of January on this, unless we knew up front that we couldn't achieve <laughs> yes. you know, some of the. Yeah, and we're still years. fine tuning that. I, I caught Ms. Copeland up, and um, we've got some time to spend on it. That was Tuesday before I left for a meeting, and then so I got back. In the district yesterday, so uh, we've got a little bit more work to do to talk through. Mark, is there anything that you want to add on that from that end? No, I mean, I think you've pretty well covered. I mean, your bonding capacity at the moment is a bit of a moving target, depending on, so we're right on the cusp of, you know, the, the new budget coming out. Um, some of the feedback that I'm getting is that there's maybe a 10% increase coming in equalization, which is going to have a dramatic impact on what your bonding capacity is, but that would be effective July 1 next year. Um, so, you know, it gets into questions of timing for this project, but I mean, your bonding capacity in the conservative end right now is about 4 million. Um, you can easily get to 5.5 million if we take into account some general fund that you authorized with the innovation hub. Um, if we see the increases that they're talking about in equalization, you can be up to $13 million in bonding capacity come July 1. So the money's there. It, it may become a question of timing um, or what you're willing to do to sort of bridge the gap between now and when that new budget goes into effect. 
but I, I, I feel comfortable that you can get there, as, as Dr. Chowley said. And, and I'll share, there's, when we did our district facility plan, just throw another number out to you. That seems like forever ago, but that was April of 2020. Um, in, in facilities, we had about a $58 million unmet need. So there's additional, even though we going the direction of the energy savings project, handling some of those pieces. Um, this is a big piece. The preschool was, Head Start Preschool was in the district facility plan. There's still additional needs that, that we have um, across the district that we'll continue to um, address as, as funding becomes available. Because um, that's obviously very restricted funding that we don't do certain things with. Other questions from the board regarding the roof information? Right. The you. last one that we'll discuss, uh, and Eric has on the elevation, it's not only to discuss roof systems, but it's also to discuss uh, some areas on the exterior elevation that are. Uh, cement siding uh, and areas on the end and Eric's got them currently the the way it is designed and shown and again don't get please don't get necessarily caught up in color just know it's a different product but the blue uh, and the white on the ends of the cables uh, on those uh, are the areas that are in question. So what we did was we act, asked Eric to come up with other ideas that uh, we could provide you, whether it be uh, the cement siding which is shown, or whether it be brick those items uh, in one brick, or multiple colored bricks, as you can see, there's a multicolored brick uh, there, and another one that will be uh, so basically what my family was trying to say is that we don't have the problems this year, so let me kind of step back. So this is the elevation that's here, this command part of the panel. So it was it was on a large box that they had been on each end, kind of, kind of forming a bookend. And then the individual classroom, the, the cables, so we were grouping them, like, so you have blue, a white, and a green. And that was the wrap around the corner stuff. The elevations along those city. And then here would be the watch street elevation. So again, the white panel of the admin, big like blue, another white, maybe another green out here along uh, along Washington. So taking those that surface areas for that veneer and taking and turning it all the cement fiber panel into a brick and so we looked at a couple of different shades of brick that would go well with red that matches uh tillman. That's what this kind of the salmon color reddish color would be is that a brick that either matches or very similar to the color so I did it, it would have been to use it in more of a light green, a white, a white brick that would be kind of used here. So here's a group of groups. A set of tops was here, a set of tops was here, and then there's that here. So when we would just make everything break with here. So that was one option. So I went to option A. Option B would take that, maybe make the same color, but make up. A little bit more, it's maybe a little bit more buried. Again, this is up into a resident neighborhood. It's designed for kids of age three or five, so we kind of want to make it more a homey look to it. Um, oops. So there's one option. And then we took it and looked at what if we just use well, just two brick colors, the red and the tilted. But then maybe more of a green cloth cover and put that at the admin area. And the book in and all the cables to be that cover. Again, this is something that we could look at um, down the road after it's protected. And it also would be a deduct for instance. A lot of these details that exist already that could be easily stripped or altered. So this is not something that we need to decide today. Was just to cover a brief report we might be looking at. Again, your 
sorry, can you say that last sentence again? You cut out. I could, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all might have understood. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of listen to you what we were thinking. He wants to basically get feedback if there is a strong opinion one way or the other. Uh, the cement siding, the first option with the multiple colors is the most expensive. Uh, going back to a brick, whether it be multicolored or single colored, is about a two hundred twenty-five thousand dollar deduct. So, if there is a opinion as you see this that you say, "Hey, I really don't like that," or "I really like that," it's, you can say that now, and that would at least let them go to in a direction of what they're achieving. So, we're thinking we can do this as a deduct, right? You can. Um, relative to that. Cement panels, Eric, would be very similar to what we have at the Innovation Hub, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, so you, you all know what the outside of the cement panels look like um, here, where that would be brick. Um, any difference in expectancy on those two different mm -hmm. products? Okay. Those two items would be far enough down the schedule that they should not affect you either way. But as we sit here, I'll, I'll share, Tillman has four spots that we, in the next couple of years, need to re-roof. We've done the gym, we've done the um, stage area, we've done the auditorium. Um, we've taken care of part of the front, but the rest of that we have projected at about 1.4 million um, to finish re you know, to update those roofs. Um, just isn't, you know, a need to pop in my head if we're sitting here talking, those two deducts if we're right on those estimates, are about $975,000. So um, you, you can see how some of this plays into the bigger picture and other needs we have across facility needs we have across the district. Other questions or comments from the board? I think it's a little hard for me to tell how to, you know, just looking at these on this type of picture but I would say, you know, the building's going to be here for 50 years. If there's a big difference in what's being recommended from an aesthetic standpoint to save $250,000, I'd rather make sure we do what looks best because it's a long-term deal. So I would like some guidance from people or are, are, are experts on why they recommended the cement and the colors in the very building it looked. There's a kid's building and things like that. I think there was all playing into that, Dr. Hudson. No, I'm just, I, the other one, that they're all the same. That was the one that I just felt most comfortable with. You know what I'm talking about? The, the picture where each of the, that one? Yes. Yeah. And would that be with brick or with cement panels? Either way, you feel more comfortable with mm -hmm. But that's just me. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. Mm -hmm. Was that the same? Yes. No, yes. No, sorry. Sorry. So that can again be achieved with either or. Um, cement panel or I mean it was right. or a brick but, either but one. If you, and again the cement panel was picked to tie this building to that building, and as you look at your overall campus, same thing with the metal roof sort of trying to tie all those things together to, to, to have that harmony, but again, it's... So when you go back to the stone on Tillman um, and how this building connects, that's how you, that's a big reason aesthetically we use the cement panels relative to connect that to Tillman. We try to match the brick best we can. Of course, you know, we're 56, 55 versus, you know, 19. Um, when you're doing that. So um, it's not an exact match, but you get close. And so, um, you know, the panel's probably, you know, at least from an architect's viewpoint, better match the stone on Tillman than what you would see in the brick of, of a similar color. Um, is that thought process? And one other thought process that we've had, where this project is going, and the fact that there are houses that will remain on that city block, just the way it will mesh into it if you went shingled 
versus metal or if you went brick versus cement, it's going to fit, it's either going to A, fit the block it's on, or B, it's going to fit your canvas. So either way, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer there. It's truly what the vision of this board will be for long term. I like the cement. I like the same. I like the cement, yeah. Yes, yeah. I think the consensus I'm getting is they like the uniform color the best and also uh, at least two of us probably lean toward the cement panels over the brick. Yes. And uh, I think that seems to be the direction we're going. Good head knocks there will work. Yeah. It gives direction. I like yeah. it. Yeah, it does. Thank you. <laughs> That's on my part. I thank you for allowing us to come up and get a little direction. We don't like making huge decisions without having a little bit of your time and input. And I know in the middle of the day it was difficult, but glad to, glad to be here with you today and look forward to seeing you over the next couple of months. Are there any other questions from the board? Thank you for putting all this together, too, and thank you for your efforts to. Help, help get us, keep us on a very, what sounds, seems like a difficult timeline. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also uh, appreciate your efforts on what's obviously a moving target with pricing and bidding and things like that. So. Just so you know, very quick update. We are in tomorrow, hopefully we'll start a 10 day waiting period on the asbestos removal process. So. After that 10 days is up, then we can start tearing down buildings and taking asbestos out of the buildings and starting clearing. So just that's the quick five second update on where that stands on that package. If there's, no, if there's no other, thank you very much. Thank you all thank very you. much. If there's, no other questions from you. The, if there's no other questions from the board, is there a motion for adjournment? I make a motion we adjourn. There's a motion for adjournment. Is there a second? I second. And a second. Call the roll, please. Dr. Koji? Yes. Ms. Hancock? Yes. Dr. Hudson? Yes. Dr. LeBain? Yes.